we're going to be watching um, Ardetha's the Decisive Strikes Fall from Greatness, because obviously this has been kind of like the big thing that's come out of the um, the mid-chapter is that like Decisive Strike was dead, <laughs> and how that's kind of like incentivized a lot more tunneling, so I want to see what they have to say about it. So. Uh, yeah, that would certainly help, huh? Decisive Strike is one of the most well-known perks in Dead by Daylight. Even some people who have never played DBD will be familiar with it. Really? For years, Decisive Strike was the single best perk for survivors by a landslide. But fast forward to present day, and it's not too uncommon to see matches where none of the four survivors have it. Yeah, and even sucks. mentioning the perk's name ignites a full-fledged war in comment sections where people argue whether the perk is dead or not. This is that really an argument? Is that really an argument? Is, is that actually an argument? Do, do people think DS is not dead? Who thinks DS is not dead? Who's out here thinking DS is still alive? Who, who's out here thinking DS is still a thing? Anyone? I thought we all kind of like, whether you, it, it worked to your benefit or it pissed you off, I thought we all agreed that the perk was dead now. <laughs> like, like who, who actively thinks that, that DS is, is still a threat. Hello? What? This perk is so divisive that we might as well rename it to Divisive Strike. It's Strike. somewhat comparable to Ruin for Killers, where it was once the most used perk by far, for years in fact, whereas the same can't be said about its use in present day. To discuss Decisive Strike's downfall, I must first explain what made it so powerful in the first place. Okay, so here's the deal. This is something that I've kind of explained before, but I, I, will, I will do a tiny little soapbox about it again. It's like the whole point of the mid chapter from behaviors perspective was to stop the most used perks. It wasn't actually to make the game healthier. It was just to curb the numbers, stop high use of high use perks and up the use of low use perks. That was that was the only reason they changed anything. They don't give they don't give a darn about the game's health. It was more about switching the meta. It didn't matter if the things that were meta were healthy for the game, it needed to go because they wanted to switch the meta. DS was one of those things that besides being active in the end game, was healthy for the game because it combated tunneling directly. Just like Corrupt combated gen rushing directly and was fine and need to be changed. But they changed both Corrupt and DS respectively, which were both healthy for the game. It's numbers. And what exactly pulled the perk down to where it is now? Original Decisive Strike Decisive Strike was added all the way back in October of 2016 with the release of the Halloween chapter, containing both Michael Myers and Laurie Strode, undoubtedly the most important update ever for Dead by Daylight. If it weren't for this chapter, almost none of us would have ever heard of DBD, and it's so Yep. Halloween is the chapter that got me into DBD, by the way. If you wonder why the, 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 the low point uh, uh, killer redemption is, is Myers, because I was a Myers main for freaking forever. M Michael Myers is my favorite like horror movie villain. Halloween is my favorite horror movie. I have, I have the best se Halloween sequel, don't at me, just sitting back there on my, on my, my little, my display that you see on stream all the time. I love this movie. This movie is also great. Like I, I love this series and that, and that, that DLC is what got me playing the game. So truth. <laughs> certainly wouldn't have grown to the incredible popularity okay. it has today. Back then, things were much simpler. The entire player base was much newer, therefore much worse at the game, and balance wasn't taken anywhere near as seriously. The overall design of Myers and Laurie's perks- Is that true? Everybody says this, but I can't get a consensus on this. That's that's crazy to me. And I can't, it, it makes me mad because I only started playing in 2020, so I can't confirm or deny. Some people who played way back when say the game was always sweaty and they've just always changed the name of the game to this perk or that perk or this perk or that perk. But then there's also a slew of DVD veterans that are always like, uh, yeah, back in my day, we all shook hands before the game, smacked each other's butts, and then we had a good clean game out there in the field. <laughs> like, like, which one is the truth? And I've, I've, I've had people that I have actively went back and watched their streams and they're running the best things that were possible for the meta at that time and they were trying to camp and tunnel just like people try to camp and tunnel now so like which one's the truth 
did, did, did we all have like a, like a blood pact to never sweat? Or was it really just the way the game's always been? <laughs> I don't, why do I hear both these stories and see both these things? That's ridiculously stupid? Yeah, because you had like double vaults like everywhere. Ridiculous setups with like no restraint. Like, I don't know. I just, I just think it's weird that like, even the DVD veteran player base can't agree on like, was the, like the, I, I don't know where this myth has come from that like Deepity used to be a sanctimonious place where we just sat up on the hills as monks and prayed to the, to the entity to all have great and nice matches and we were all friends <laughs> like like I don't know seem to be more reflective of their appearances, behaviors, and actions in the movies with less of a focus on what this would mean for the balance of the game. A prime example would be Play With Your Food, a perk putting extreme emphasis on the stalking aspect of Myers, popping out at people for brief moments before retreating in order to build those stacks. Of course, hindsight tells us that intentionally losing chases really screws over your pressure as killer, yep. even if that movement speed buff is really nice. Yep. But back then, the thought process was much more fun oriented. So while Myers got perks more geared towards obsessing over one target, Laurie got perks geared towards being a self-sufficient survivor too stubborn to accept death with Soul Survivor, Objective Obsession, and Decisive Strike. Soul Survivor and Objective Obsession were originally designed to pair with each other, with Objective Obsession revealing the killer's aura to Laurie whenever she looks in their direction, yeah, that with was... the downside of the killer- That was busted. That was busted. You, <laughs> that was horrifying. You could loot, you could be the best looper in the world and all she's got to do is just, just, just go. Oh, never mind. That's not my zoom. Anyways, you can just stare at them. You can just stare at them. You can just go, I'm just going to stare at you. And that's it. Now you can loot better. To alleviate the down the objective obsession and decisive strike. Soul survivor and objective obsession. But yeah, objective obsession was stupid. And people would send you the maps like Midwich where you can't do anything. Because all they gotta do is look at your direction, see you're on the other side of the giant square, and then just run to the other side. Shift W away. God, that was so annoying. ...were originally designed to pair with each other, with Objective Obsession revealing the killer's aura to Lori whenever she looks in their direction, with the downside of the killer also being able to see her aura at the same time. And Soul Survivor gradually blocked the killer's ability to see auras altogether, depending on how many survivors were dead, to alleviate the downside of the killer seeing her as well. However, her last perk, Decisive Strike, was already a clear standout from the other two perks as yep. it worked fine by itself. It didn't need any other perks to combine with it. Decisive Strike's object. function was simple. When the killer picks you up, hit a skill check to instantly wiggle free and leave the killer stunned for five entire seconds. That's fine. Thus giving birth to a genre not, of survivor perks. Let me say, not not find it as soon as you're picked up, but a five second duration is not as, that, that's balanced now infamous for dominating metas for the last five years. Yeah, that's Second a chance perks. Unlike the modern day version you're used to, the original version had no ifs and no buts. Yep. No timers, no yep. obsession requirements, no need to be unhooked to activate it, doing gens or healing didn't disable it. It was genuinely as simple as, killer picks you up, you hit a skill check, you instantly broke free. Needless to say, it was extremely strong. Yep. It was common to see matches where all four survivors had decisive strike equipped. And the only time I have ever wanted to quit Dead by Daylight. I love this game. I really do. I find a lot of things about it really frustrating, and I love to talk about the things that frustrate me about the game. But for the most part, I do love this game. I do enjoy playing this game. The only time I have ever actually wanted to like full on quit Dead by Daylight is because of decisive strike. Old decisive strike. There is nothing more frustrating. I, then, then, then trying to complete your objective, which is to stop the survivors from from completing the gens, and you're getting DS off the gens. Okay, well, I gotta stop the survivor from hook saving the other survivor. Get DS DS off the, the the hook grab. Like it, like even you off a totem. You try to grab somebody off a totem. DS off of hook. It was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And there was one match I was playing on Old Orman, which was its own problem. And I got DS'd off a of gen three times. And they ended up winning. And I seriously considered uninstalling the game forever after that match. I seriously considered uninstalling the game forever for that after that match. Because quite literally, I was being punished for playing the game. I remember it was a Steve too that did it to me. And then I was like, ah, so mad.
I literally thought about just quitting the game forever because I was quite literally actively almost every match being punished for playing the game. I was being punished for trying to achieve my goal. And that uh, that was the closest I've ever got to actually like quitting Dead by Daylight. Like, that's the closest I've ever gotten. It's, I consider uninstalling after a match where I, I got triple DS off of gents. And at least two decisives was practically guaranteed. The strength of Decisive Strike came from two core factors. The first, most obvious factor is simply getting a second chance at life before even being hooked the first time is very, very strong. The second factor is the ability to reset a chase. A hefty yep. 5 second stun is no laughing matter, and the amount of distance you can gain from that is astounding, not to mention giving you plenty of time to reach your next safe loop. See, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with, with him dogging the five second duration the five second duration is fine honestly if you're getting tunneled if you're getting tunneled like the, the whole point of ds is so if you're getting tunneled you get another chance because often when you get tunneled there is no counterplay to that there is nothing you can do if the killer just comes back to the hook and picks you instead of the person that unhooked you there's not a whole lot you can do so the whole point is so you can get to a loop that, that's the whole point of the perk but he's like phrasing it like, oh, how how dare they have five seconds to get to the next loop? Like, no, that's what the perk's supposed to do. The only thing they needed to do, in my opinion, was make it and deactivate the end game, because at that point, there's no other objective besides to kill the survivors. You don't need to defend the gens anymore, so you don't need to, you're not being tumbled in the end game. So, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Decisive Strike's power was immediately visible, and after only two months, it received its first nerf having the stun reduced by one second. While a 20% stun reduction was certainly a step in the right direction, ultimately, Decisive Strike's pop- I would take four. I would take four. I feel like if they buffed it to four, it's just like a little like quality of life buff instead of like reverting the perk. Like, I, I would take that. Popularity remained completely untouched. It was time to make a more substantial change. Only another two months after that, in February of 2017, Decisive Strike was changed to add an element of risk to the perk, tying the immediate stun effect to only the obsession. But the perk wasn't completely useless to non-obsessions. They could eventually stun the killer too, just like normal, but only after filling the wiggle bar to 35%. Then they'd have the chance to that hit their strange. Decisive Strike skill check. While this change certainly added an element of risk, stopping it from being guaranteed value for all four survivors no matter what, it still had minimal effect on Decisive Strike's strength and popularity for two reasons. He saw the first this being that wins. just having Decisive Strike equipped made you more likely to be the obsession. Yeah. So it's not like somebody without the perk would end up stealing the spotlight. Yeah. The other reason was that even if you weren't the obsession, achieving 35% wiggle progress really wasn't that hard nor uncommon unless you went down straight in front of a hook. If the stun actually started when survivors were able to move, then maybe three seconds would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It, it, I guess the duration isn't technically the problem. It's just like you got to guarantee that distance. That's that's the that's the key problem. It's not that the three second stun is the problem. It's that you can't guarantee the distance. Because essentially, you, you're hitting a reset button because somebody puts you in a, a zero counterplay situation, right? That's the whole point of Decisive Strike, is somebody puts you in a situation that does not have counterplay, so you are creating counterplay by bringing a perk. So you, you need to be able to get somewhere to essentially have that reset happen. And if, and if it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a five second stun necessarily, but you gotta guarantee that distance somehow. Also, hook spawns were really not the best for killers back then, with certain areas of certain maps rendering survivors completely unhookable. So, four months in and two nerfs after its release, Decisive Strike still held the crown for the best survivor perk by a total landslide, and its popularity was comparable to that of Ruin for Killers. In other words, good luck finding a match where it isn't used. It would be an entire two years before Decisive Strike would receive any further changes. In the meantime, he probably talks about this, but I'm going to cover this like like in a quick like three second, like not three second, but like, you know, a quick burst. Uh, obviously, you also paired this with Unbreakable, because obviously a lot of people that are probably watching and especially if they end up putting this on the YouTube are going to be like, well, just slug him forehead. If they had DS, you just slugged him. Yeah, well, if they had Unbreakable, they just get back up. So it was a 
darned if you do, darned if you don't situation. So, yeah, that's why you don't do How that. How are killers dealing with it? Well, due to the fact that Decisive Strike was practically guaranteed in every match, killers played with the assumption that every single survivor had it. Mm -hmm. This means that the obsession- And that was partially a good thing. And this is what we've been kind of alluding to this whole time. That's partially a good thing. Because what you're seeing now, which is why tunneling is worse now, is because there's no assumption of DS. And even if there is DS, the effect is so weak that there's no fear of it anymore. And that and, and that increased tunneling like 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 that. The moment DS got got uh, nerfed, like th there's no more fear of it anymore. So the tunneling just went through the roof because why not? There's 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 no drawback to doing it, this, despite it being not too healthy for the game unless you're doing it after a certain amount of gens. Like it doesn't matter anymore. You you can like we had that uh we had that Wesker match today. Where that Wesker tunneled somebody out of four gents. And he and he won. He didn't do anything like skillful. He just like waited for somebody to come off hook. The moment they came off hook, down them, put him right back. The moment somebody came for the unhook, go right back, down them, put him up again. It's not it's not that hard. Especially uh, like it, as early in the game as it was, to be like four gens. I mean, having a 3v1 at four gens is like almost impossible to come back from, especially against a good killer like Wesker. And that's because there is no fear that if I get like a killer would formally hesitate in that situation because, you know, they might be afraid to get hit by the DS and have another long chase. So there was kind of a hesitation there. Now that hesitation just doesn't exist. So you just have all these matches that are almost played like a pseudo competitive match where they try to make it a three one as quick as possible, which does not work in the format of just like a crazy fun like pub match where people are bringing all sorts of perks, all sorts of play styles, player skill levels into a match. Somebody may be bringing a build to sweat. Somebody might be bringing a build to do a challenge. Somebody might be bringing a build just for fun, like a like a plundering build. And they can't they can't prepare in anticipation for a a, a, a sweaty like tunnel out of the game at four gens scenario if they're not coordinated, if they didn't bring the right stuff. So it's just kind of like not Good. <laughs> would frequently find themselves slugged to death, yep. or at least slugged until the killer had built up substantial pressure and could afford to take the stun and pressure reset. In scenarios where the obsession was down vaguely close to a hook, the killers would perform what's called juggling, where they pick up the survivor, <laughs> I've carry them for a yeah. moment, drop them, carry them again, drop them, and repeat until they reached a hook. This strategy completely bypassed decisive strike as back then, the skill check would appear a second or so after the pickup animation finished, unlike nowadays where the skill check comes as you're being picked up. That being said, this strategy was quite time consuming, and unless the obsession was very close to the hook, it was honestly just as slow as taking the stun. There was also a glitch killers could utilize to straight up disable decisive strike oh, really? by basic attacking at the exact same time as the survivor hit the skill check. Of course, killers really? couldn't see the skill check, so they didn't know exactly when to do it. While they did know when That's the skill cool. check would pop up, they That's didn't not good, know but it's just a fun the little circle fun the skill check would actually appear on, so it wasn't reliable. That was In a way, thing I didn't decisive know. Decisive Strike was somewhat comparable to Ruin. They were both used almost every single match. They were both the most popular perks by a landslide, and they were both highly debated sources of frustration for the opposition. The difference between the two was that Decisive Strike was so much more controversial than Ruin, and Ruin yep. was certainly controversial. The animal-like rage regarding DS from both sides can still clearly be seen today. Feel free to scroll down and see the comments for reference. I just keep why yeah. exactly was that? Well, the first reason was just how huge of an impact Decisive Strike made to the killer's win condition. In a normal match, each survivor takes three hooks to kill, totaling to 12 hooks to kill all four survivors. With Decisive Strike effectively nullifying one instance of what would have been a hook, if all four survivors had it, the killer would pretty much have to work through 16 hooks to win. Yep. But I think the biggest factor was that it dealt a huge blow to the killer's pressure. Having to go through the song and dance of chasing a survivor, dealing with loops, getting a hit, catching up again, getting your second hit, just for you to lose that hard-earned hook and not only have to earn another hit on the survivor, but of them having a huge four-second head start was not only demoralizing and frustrating, but it made the game so much more difficult for killers to actually win without tunneling. 
Yeah, and like here's in, in the th this is why DS before its most recent nerf was actually in a moderately good place because all of that is only frustrating because completing the objective didn't turn it off, right? Completing objectives or, or not even completing objectives necessarily, but like like anything that progressed the game. Period. Like unhooking someone, cleansing a hex totem, doing a generator. Now these disabled anything, so you were free to keep playing the game and just essentially had pocketed like invincibility at any point when they finally got that 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 disabled having it be disabled when you actually advanced the game in some way it was actually fair because you had to make the choice if you were going to force ds that you had to do nothing you had to contribute nothing to the game nothing to the game up until that point you had to do nothing to contribute to the game within your duration which was a really really long time so that i feel like that was the best thing they could have done to it you know keep in mind back then the game was plagued with infinite loops in a sizable chunk of the maps there were more pallets this is what Tri was talking about vaulted slower broke pallets slower syringes used to literally insta heal you the same frame you used it flashlights used to have insta blind add-ons Brand new parts instantly repaired generators from 0 to 100% instead of the 15% they do nowadays. Sprint burst regenerated at 50% speed while running, so every one minute the survivor would gain another sprint burst. Maps were bigger, gens were faster, and survivors could literally teleport with something called pallet vacuum. As back then, pallets could be interacted with from significantly further away, and they would instantly teleport to the opposite side of the pallet as they dropped it. God, I've seen that before. Dude, when I first saw that, when I was looking at old footage, I was like, bro, are they hacking? Bro, are they hacking? But no, like, like, like apparently that was just a thing. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, pallet vacuum, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. Both you and Uzi are like, hey, hey, bring it back so we can actually just win our game. <laughs> yeah, when I first saw this, watching old footage, I was so confused. The game was absolutely horrendous for killers. Yeah, hot take. Hot take. I feel like a lot of the reason that I hear a lot of DVD veterans say the game was more fun back then was because most people that I hear say that were our survivor mates, and the game was very heavily cited in your favor. <laughs> like, ridiculously so. And until you hear somebody say all that back to back, I don't think you realize just how much the game was in your favor. <laughs> like, I feel like the game was more fun to you because you could like never try and always win for the most part. <laughs> like, listen to all that back to back. Maybe that's why the game was more fun for you. <laughs> maybe that's what it was. Maybe, maybe the games felt more fun because you could like sneeze the wrong way and still win a match. <laughs> maybe that, maybe that has something to do with that. Maybe that has something to do with that. Maybe. Playing Look, as it was killer just goofy, was frustration goofy. after frustration, and the game was incredibly stacked in the survivor's favor. I think using decisive strike to just straight up get an extra life, as well as punish the killer for simply doing his job, a there was only so long behavior could ignore it something had to be done. So, two years later, on the 19th of March 2019, patch 2.6.0 released, and Decisive Strike was reworked. The perk's core functionality remained the same, but it had a new condition added to make the perk fix an issue that had steadily become a bigger problem over time, tunneling. tunneling. It no longer mattered if you were the obsession or not, but Decisive Strike would only activate for 60 seconds after being unhooked. The stun duration was also reduced by a further second, bringing the total duration to three seconds. That is, that is, this that is already bad was enough. absolutely huge. Killer players who didn't tunnel finally got to breathe a sigh of relief, as they would no longer be punished for simply playing well and downing a survivor, for the most part. There were some scenarios where the killer could hook survivor A, go and chase survivor B, hook them, stumble across Survivor A again and still end up taking a DS to the face despite not tunneling. Yep. But for the most part, this change was absolutely game changing. Survivors on the other hand weren't taking things so well. A huge outcry immediately began, with people deeming the perk as useless, saying that they would never play this game ever again or even coordinating review bombs on Steam, wow. mass submitting negative reviews at the same time in an attempt to defund behavior until I think this is the dark side 
of the DVD community. And every time I go back and I listen to stuff like this or watch stuff that like actual like like people streams from back then, I feel like being a bully to the other side has always been baked into the game's DNA. Like we talk about now, it's like, you know, of course you're bringing four slowdown into a game or, you know, you guys all brought gen rush perks into the game. Like, like this is a new thing. <laughs> Bullying people and winning as easily as possible and BMing them afterwards has been baked into this game's DNA since its existence. <laughs> like, like, you can't bully people with a perk anymore, so you were view bombed the entire video game? What is wrong with you people? You can't bully somebody with a perk anymore, so you tried to defund behavior? Because you can't bully someone? What? It's one of those things where if, you, if it didn't happen, I wouldn't believe it. I'm like, there's no way that something that stupid happened. Well, no. <laughs> Stay classy, everybody. Till they undo the nerf. While it could be easy to write off these people as bad players who couldn't play without their extra chance perk and trying to defund the devs over a single perk change when things were already so heavily in the survivor's favor was certainly beyond childish. Their claims of the perk being useless certainly weren't unfair because it absolutely was for one reason, enduring. Enduring nowadays only reduces pallet stuns, but back then enduring yeah, reduced I've heard every about this. stun, including decisive yeah, I've strike. Heard about this. Due to various factors, less perks in the game at that point, more pallets in the game, playstyle differences, etc. Enduring was very much meta for killers and would be used in most matches. With DS only having a 3 second stun timer now, along with Enduring speeding up stun recovery by 75%, DS really didn't help much at all. Yeah. People who wanted to tunnel absolutely could with minimal repercussion. You mean like it now? It was bad. <laughs> really bad. While the devs certainly Dude, wanted to limit the effectiveness of DS. I have... How long was that in the game? How long was that in the game fire? Because I remember that happening to me. I remember playing a hag match and for some reason the stun just like did not just matter like i got stunned while playing hag and they i just caught up like instantly that has hag by the way because that i remember that but yeah i i remember that like what yes yeah, <laughs> that was so, so weird wasn't a free get out of jail card they didn't intend on making the perk borderline useless uh -huh. more changes were needed only two weeks later these changes came the stun duration was buffed back to its original value of 5 seconds so that it remained effective even against Enduring, with the promise that if they ever made it so Enduring doesn't affect DS, the stun will be brought back to 3 seconds. But it didn't. At this point, DS was in a pretty decent spot. It helped punish tunneling, but didn't punish other killers just for playing the game normally. It still wasn't perfect though, while DS was only active for one minute after being unhooked, that was pretty much one minute of straight god mode, as yep. nothing other than time would disable decisive, meaning survivors could get unhooked, run to safety, heal to full, and then hop on a gen, or break the killer's ruin totem, and if the killer didn't realize that this survivor had recently been unhooked, they'd end up getting stunned anyway, even without the intention of tunneling. The other issue was that with the stun duration now being buffed to account for enduring, any killers without enduring would take an almighty hit to their pressure, yep. far too big of a hit. So to get rid of this huge difference, two months later, the devs nerfed enduring so that it would only affect pallet stun durations. No longer would it affect DS. One slight issue though. Decisive Strike's stun duration still remained at its previous value of 5 seconds, yep. which was specifically for Enduring. Uh -huh. So now, every killer that got hit with it would have to take that almighty stun duration, Enduring or not. This update started to make DS somewhat of a problem perk again, as increasingly, killers who weren't tunneling were getting hit by it more and more, whether it be getting lots of fast kills or survivors getting craftier to force value during that 60 second window. Nonetheless, it was still in a significantly better spot than before. It would be another two years before Decisive Strike would receive its next set of nerfs. On the 30th of March 2021, DS was nerfed with the addition of new restrictions that disable the perk if the user is doing things that indicate they are not being tunneled. And that was perfect. And, that, and that's perfect. Honestly, like, 
All they had to do to make this perk fine was make it deactivate in the endgame. That, that was the best version of this perk. Completely balanced. It was completely fine. They changed it because of because of, of numbers. Not because it was a problem, because numbers said so. And it was just loads my Such mind. as repairing gens, healing, and breaking totems. Decisive Strike once again found itself in a good spot. With the stun duration still being high at 5 seconds, any tunneling killers would be punished severely, whereas the new restrictions helped ensure only tunnelers took this almighty stun. Survivors could enjoy a tunnel-free experience, and killer players could simply not tunnel if they didn't want to take the stun. Exactly. Fast forward to the 19th of July 2022, three entire years after making the promise of bringing Decisive Strike's stun timer back to three seconds if Enduring got nerfed, and over an entire year after that Enduring nerf, they finally made good on that promise, for better or for worse, yep. bringing the stun duration down from five seconds to three seconds, alongside disabling the perk once the last gen is- The problem is now, like this goober right here, this this killer, there's so many killers in the game now that a three second stun means nothing. Three second stun, Huntress Hatchet. Three second stun, Harpoon by Deathslinger. Three second stun, Nurse just downs you. Three second stun, Blight just hits you. Three second stun, like the list goes on. So many killers, a three second stun doesn't do jack anymore. Even a pyramid head with like range add-ons. Instantly. D Gunzo. The game's different now. Upholding a promise from years and years and years ago when the game is in a completely different state does not add up. It, it does not. The math doesn't add up there. It does not add up there. It just doesn't. The game is in a different place now, so you can't uphold a promise from a different version of the game because it's, it may not be the best solution anymore. I don't it's think finished, it is. Which is the current iteration of the perk at the time of this video, which leaves us with one question. How do you feel about Decisive Strike nowadays? I personally think that the perk could do with a tiny buff, yep. not to the stun duration, but to simply reduce the amount of stumble survivors get after using it and oh. jumping off the killer's shoulder, Put so that in. just a bit more distance <laughs> can be gained without keeping the killer stunned for longer. Uh. Let me know your... <laughs> You can do it. Thoughts in the comments below. You can do that. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for sticking to the end. If you have any other things you'd like me to discuss in a similar style to this video, be sure to let me know. You can. Yeah, that's a. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like. Like. I don't know. Changing stuff because of numbers never makes sense to me. Change stuff based on, like, the quality of how it affects the game. And what 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 players do to each other that be, makes things unfun, or makes makes things like unhappy for others. Like corrupt prevented gen rushing, made killers happy, wasn't overpowered. Same thing with the Cyber Strike prevented tunneling, made survivors happy, made them want to keep playing the game. It wasn't unhealthy. It wasn't OP. So like changing them just because numbers say so is kind of like. I, I don't get it. Like, why do that? Because that's, that's like, that's why so much of Survivor is just unfun now. Like, a Survivor's not unfun because, like, Survivor's actually unfun. I love the I love the new builds. There's a lot more build variety. Uh, new Dead Hard is actually a super fun perk. Like, there's so many good things about Survivor right now that's super fun to play. But the fact that tunneling is essentially free, it, it makes some matches really awful. And you don't get tunneled every match. Maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody else getting tunneled. But tunneling happens really often. And when it does happen, it does kind of ruin the experience of a game because nobody wants to play a competitive game in a pub match. Nobody wants to do that. Much people running off the record. Even off the record doesn't matter for tunneling. If they come right back, if they're like hard tunneling, if they come back to hook the moment you get on hook, they can eat through your endurance right away. As if it were just normal base game BT. Right? They can just make it not exist. So, yeah. I just don't think there was a reason to change it, and changing it just based on numbers is kind of just... I don't know. I just... Sometimes it feels like they just pay too much attention to their data. Like, way too much attention to, like, what what does the data say, and not, like, what would be better for the actual gameplay and the gameplay in the game. I just don't think it's good for the game's health, to be honest.
I hope they... I don't know, like, I guess that makes a little bit more sense. Like they said, it's like they were trying to, like, um, like, 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 uphold a promise that they made years ago. But like I said, it's like, that's a, the game's a completely different place than it was years ago. So, so why would you, why would you put a, an old solution into a new game? That just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Don't use old solutions for new games, <laughs> for games, for games as they evolve and change. Please don't do that. So, Yeah. Hopefully they, they, like, literally what they need to do is, is either what Fire said, where it's like, have this, have the roll off of the shoulder happen immediately so they can run, or extend the duration. Like, having it turn off in the end game was the only thing it needed. Obviously, that was the only adjustment it needed.